here with uh, Jeremy Allaire, CEO of Brightcove, which is known as being an uh, online video platform with thousands of customers. But you're launching uh, a new product which takes the company in a new direction called AppCloud. Right. What is that? So AppCloud is what we refer to as a content app platform. It's a cloud-based service that helps uh, publishers, whether you're a media company or a publish rich, interactive, content-centric applications that can be deployed across new distribution platforms, smartphones, tablets, ultimately connected TVs, even Facebook pages, uh, initially smartphones and tablets, both as native apps and as touch web experiences and, and managing and operating those as online content services. So right once, deploy everywhere. Very much so. The dream that everyone's been pursuing for years. Right? Very much so. Yes. And uh, your, the company that you worked for before and you sold Macromedia to, Adobe, has a similar approach, right, where with uh, their uh, creative suite uh, and Flash apps, where Flash right. apps can become uh, an iPhone app. How is this, uh, is this same approach, is it, or how is it different from what they're doing? Well, I mean, I think we're, we're, there are a few things. I think one is we're clearly betting entirely on open web technology platforms like HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. Unlike Flash. Unlike, yeah, any other proprietary platform. But we do want to, you know, n enable those technologies to interface with proprietary innovation. So Apple has innovated in iOS with a lot of really unique features in their App Store and in their distribution platform. Google's doing similar things. We'll see similar things in other native platforms. A Facebook app might be able to take advantage of Facebook micropayments over time. There's lots of things out there that you want people who create these content apps to be able to take advantage of. I think the other is we're, you know, we're running all this as a cloud service. This isn't traditional shrink wrap software. These aren't classic tools that you install and use. This is a cloud service that anyone can log into, use, and operate with. And it's not just the creation of the app. It's actually the ongoing life cycle, deployment, content management, content delivery, uh, advertising integration, real-time analytics. There's a whole set of services that are important to these kinds of content apps, and we're trying to provide that as part of this uh, content app platform. And is this for just video apps, or is it for any kind of apps, or a subset of apps, like just content apps? Yeah, so we, we talk about this as content apps, and, and that is obviously much broader than just video, really any form of content, whether it's text, image, you know, video, or, or data, uh, can be published and managed and distributed through uh, a platform like this. Um, but we are, you know, trying to focus it on, you know, rich content presentation, rich information experiences, as opposed to things like, you know, real-time 3D games or transactional applications or real-time voice or communications applications, really things that are about information and content fundamentally, as opposed to some of those other things. So it is it is obviously much broader than video, but certainly more narrow than the full universe of what people would, would create as apps. And your approach really in terms of uh, the smartphone apps is that you also create mobile web uh, sites that are a subset of, of the apps for right. discoverability via search, but then you get the full experience in the apps. Is that right. the approach? Yeah, so we have this idea of an app template, and then the app template expresses this sort of interactive content experience, and you can then choose to deploy a version of that app into an iOS phone or tablet, or an Android phone or tablet, or into an HTML, pure HTML5 experience that is for either a smartphone or a tablet-based experience. And so you can deploy across all of those, but then in the you know pure HTML5 version, there may be features that aren't available, and you can then present to the user that there may be other features they can get by clicking to get the native app. And so we're trying to create an interplay between what happens in the kind of open web versus what you might get in an installed app. And uh, so how do you avoid the creation of just hundreds and thousands of cookie cutter apps? Well, I think, you know, um, we're, you know, again, by sort of betting on the open web and open web architecture and creating an open development platform, we're sort of betting on the innovation and creativity of designers and developers. And so at the core, we have this template engine and that template engine is completely wide open. Anything you can imagine in terms of the surface of the screen, you can create a template for that. And so we think that the innovation of designers and developers will really drive that distinction. I think as you, know, as you get into sort of smaller businesses or smaller organizations that don't have the resources to invest in 
templates, they might be using WordPress as a blog for their website, and that's fairly rigid and templatized. That might be okay for what they do in these new app environments, and so we think that you know, for that tier of the market, that might be okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Eric.